Welcome to our second video on the topic of bonding and this is for GCSE students and it's an introduction to covalent bonding. By the end of this video lesson you should be able to explain the principles of covalent bonding and be able to illustrate covalent bonding in various elements and compounds using dot and cross diagrams. You should also be able to describe and explain typical physical properties of covalent substances which have a simple molecular structure. So first of all, let's recap what we mean by the term bonding. Bonding is where atoms join with other atoms, and they do this to get a full outer shell of electrons. And this is a very stable electron arrangement. Atoms can join with other atoms of the same element or different elements. And there are two main types of bonding that we're going to be discussing in our first series of videos. The first is ionic bonding, which exists between a metal and a non-metal. And the second is covalent bonding, which exists between non-metals. To get the most out of this video, you should be familiar with atomic structure. The centre of an atom is called the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have protons that are positively charged and neutrons, which are neutral. Orbiting the nucleus, we have electrons, and electrons are negatively charged, and they're found in regions called shells. For this video, it's important to know that the first shell holds two electrons, the second shell holds a maximum of eight electrons, and the third shell contains a maximum of eight electrons. So now let's look at how covalent bonding works. Well, covalent bonding occurs between non-metal atoms, and in covalent bonding, atoms share electrons to gain a full outer shell and a full outer shell of electrons is a very stable electron arrangement and in the picture we have two hydrogen atoms hydrogen is atomic number one there is one electron in the outer shell of each hydrogen atom and when a hydrogen molecule forms the two atoms share a pair of electrons and that means that they both have a full outer shell of electrons so now we're going to look at covalent bonding with examples and we're going to use dot and cross diagrams to illustrate the bonding that is taking place. So in our first example we're going to look at the covalent bonding that takes place in a molecule of fluorine, F2. Now fluorine is atomic number 9 and mass number 19 which means it has 9 electrons and its electron arrangement is 2 in the first shell and 7 in the next. So now let's have a go at drawing a covalent bonding diagram for fluorine, F2. First thing I'm going to do is draw a fluorine molecule. And then I'm going to write down the electron arrangement, which is 2, 7 for each. Now with covalent bonding diagrams, we really only need to show the outer electrons. So I'm going to draw a box which represents the shared electrons. And I'm going to put two electrons in the box because each atom needs one electron to gain a full outer shell. I then put the other electrons of fluorine. So there's six around each fluorine. And now, if I've done it right, each fluorine has a share of eight electrons, which it does. And I have a single covalent bond, a shared pair of electrons. Now in example two, we're gonna look at the covalent bonding in an oxygen molecule, O2. Now oxygen is atomic number eight, mass number 16, and it has eight electrons and an electron arrangement of two, six. So now we're going to look at the covalent bond in oxygen. So I'm going to draw two oxygen atoms joined together. I'm going to write down the electron arrangement to remind me it's two six for each atom. Now that means that each oxygen atom needs two electrons to gain a full outer shell. So in my box, which contains the shared electrons, I'm going to put four in the box, two for each oxygen atom. And then all I need to do is put the remaining four electrons for each oxygen around the outside. And each oxygen now has a share of eight electrons. Now in the box, I'm sharing two pairs of electrons. So therefore, I formed a double covalent bond. So now it's your turn to have a go at a covalent bonding diagram. So we want you to pause the video and attempt task one. For task one, we wanted to draw a covalent bonded diagram for nitrogen, N2. Now nitrogen is a molecule and nitrogen has an atomic number of seven and a mass number of 14. So it has seven electrons 
and an electron arrangement of 2, 5. So now let's see how you got on drawing a nitrogen covalent bonding diagram. So first of all, you should have drawn two atoms joined together. Now nitrogen has an electron arrangement of 2, 5. So therefore, I need to draw my shared electrons in my box and I'm going to put six electrons in the box this time because each nitrogen needs three to gain a full outer shell. So once I've put the six in the box, there's three crosses and three dots. And remember, nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell. So I'm now going to just put two more electrons in. Each nitrogen atom now has a share of eight electrons. And because there's three pairs of electrons in the box, that means there's a triple covalent bond. So now, in example three, we're going to look at the covalent bonding in a compound. And we're going to look at the covalent bonding in methane, CH4. Now, methane contains carbon and hydrogen. Carbon is atomic number six, and hydrogen is atomic number one. So when drawing a covalent bonding diagram for a compound, like methane, I always draw the central atom first. So in this case, it's carbon. There's one carbon atom, that's the central atom. And I put in the electrons, and I do this like a clock. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And then it shows that it's got four unpaired electrons, and then it's obvious where the hydrogen's electrons go. Hydrogen's got one electron, and all we do is pair them up. And what we're doing is creating four single covalent bonds. Both the carbon and the hydrogen now have full outer shells of electrons. So now in example four, we're gonna look at the covalent bonding in water, H2O. Water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Hydrogen is atomic number one, one electron in the outer shell, and oxygen is atomic number eight, as an electron arrangement of two, six. So to draw a covalent bonding diagram for water, I first draw the central atom, oxygen, and I put in the electrons. There's six in the outer shell. So I'm gonna put in 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock. And then it shows I've got two unpaired electrons. All I do is just pair up the electrons with the hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen only has one electron in the outer shell. And now both hydrogen and oxygen have a full outer shell of electrons. It's your turn to have a go at some covalent bonding diagrams. So please pause the video and answer the five questions. Just simply draw covalent bonding diagrams for the following compounds, hydrogen fluoride, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, phosphorus trichloride, and carbon dioxide. So let's see how you got on with the first question, hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride is made of a hydrogen, atomic number one, one electron, and fluorine, atomic number nine, with electron arrangement of two, seven. So we'll draw the fluorine atom and put the seven electrons around the outside. Notice once again, I put 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and I've got one unpaired electron. And I simply pair that up with a hydrogen, which has one electron, and I've got a single covalent bond one shared pair of electrons. For question two, we asked you to draw a covalent bonding diagram for ammonia. So start with the central atom, nitrogen, put the electrons in, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, etc. And you've got five electrons in the outer shell. So when you've done this, you should have three unpaired electrons. And all I do is pair them up with the hydrogens and you will see that both hydrogen and nitrogen now have a full outer shell. Hydrogen, remember, only needs one to get a full outer shell because two's in the first shell. Nitrogen needs eight. They've both got full outer shells, and I've got three single covalent bonds. So now let's look at hydrogen sulfide. So I draw a sulfur atom, that's my central atom, and I put six electrons in the outer shell because sulfur's got an electron arrangement of 286. So I put them in 12 o'clock, three o'clock, etc. And if I do it correctly, I have two unpaired electrons. And then all I do is pair them up with a hydrogen atom, which has one electron in its outer shell. And 
I've now got two covalent bonds, single covalent bonds, because they're sharing a pair of electrons each. And both the hydrogen and the sulfur now have full outer shells of electrons. We have phosphorus trichloride. So phosphorus is my central atom. Phosphorus has five electrons in the outer shell. It's got an electron arrangement of 285. So I put in the electrons. And if I've done it correctly, I will have three unpaired electrons. And then I put chlorine atoms around. Now this time you've got to be careful to remember that chlorine's got seven electrons in the outer shell. So I need to put in six more electrons for each chlorine to make sure that chlorine has seven. And when I've drawn my diagram correctly, both the chlorine and the phosphorus now has full outer shells of electrons. And I have created three covalent bonds, single covalent bonds because they share one pair of electrons. And in my next question, we asked you to draw carbon dioxide. Now this is quite a tricky one. Now I would remember if I was revising this, that carbon dioxide consists of two double covalent bonds. That's the bit of learning that I would remember. And then all I do then is draw boxes to represent the shared pair of electrons. And if I've learned that it's got two double covalent bonds, I put four electrons in the box. Dot cross, dot cross, dot cross, dot cross. And the crosses here represent the electrons for oxygen. So if I've put two already in the box, I have another four to put around each oxygen atom. Now remember, carbon is in group four. So I've already got four electrons in the outer shell of carbon. Two dots in the one box and two dots in the other. The result is two covalent bonds that are double bonds because they share two pairs of electrons. So we're now going to look at the properties of covalent substances and I'm going to concentrate on compounds so that we can make a comparison with the ionic compounds I discussed in the first video. So typical properties of covalent compounds are first of all they have very low melting points and boiling points and this is because unlike ionic compounds that have a giant structure these are just made up of simple molecules and there are weak forces between the molecules. And that's why it's very easy to pull the molecules apart. So if you look at the diagram that is on this slide here, you will see I've drawn a hydrogen chloride molecule and I've drawn a second hydrogen chloride molecule. Now when you melt or you boil a compound, what you're doing is you're not breaking the covalent bonds, you are pulling the molecules apart. So if you see the dotted lines here, or the dashed lines, those represent the forces between molecules. And it's these that we're breaking when we melt or we boil a covalent substance. Now covalent compounds have low melting points and boiling points because there are weak forces between the molecules and it doesn't take much energy to pull them apart. And two other properties you should be aware of is that covalent compounds don't normally conduct electricity in any form as they have no ions or free electrons to carry charge. And thirdly, many covalent compounds tend not to dissolve that well in water. This is because um, water is a polar solvent and it tends to attract molecules that have charges and lots of covalent molecules don't have any charges. So now let's recap the lesson objectives. First of all, you should be able to explain the principles of covalent bonding and be able to illustrate the covalent bonding in various elements and compounds using dot and cross diagrams. You should also be able to describe and explain typical physical properties of covalent substances which have a simple molecular structure. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel Dr. Rowe Chemistry and our Twitter site which contains lots of chemistry information and links at Radar Chemistry.